hot pass from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Hot Fuzz is a 2007 action comedy film directed by Edgar Wright and written by Wright and Simon Peck, starring Peck, Nick Frost, Timothy Dalton, and Jim Broadband. The film centers on two police officers investigating a series of mysterious and gruesome deaths in a West Country village. It's the second and most successful film in the Three Flowers Connected trilogy, succeeding Shaun of the Dead, 2004, and followed by The World's End, 2030. Over 100 action films were used as inspiration for developing the script. Principal photography took place in Wales, Somerset, Wright's hometown. Over 11 weeks in early 2006, visual effects were developed by 10 artists to expand on or art explosions, gore and gunfire scenes. The film opened on 16th of February 2007 in the United Kingdom and 20th of April in the United States to box office success, crossing 80 million US dollars worldwide against a budget of 12 to 16 million dollars. The film was praised by critics for its performances, direction and humor. In 2020, Empire named it the 67th greatest film of the 21st century. Section 1. Plot P.C. Nicholas Angel, a high achieving veteran police officer, is promoted to sergeant, but his resentful colleagues arrange for him to be reassigned to the small rural town of Sanford, Gloucestershire, a regular village of the year winner. Angel is soon prostituted by the mundanity of the village, his lazy and incompetent colleagues and local official commitment to low crime statistics rather than law enforcement. His partner, PC Danny Butterman, whom he arrested early for drunken behavior, is a fan of buddy cop films and the son of instructor Frank Butterman. Angel Superior. Martin Blower and Eve Draper, the two lead actors of an MGM production of Romeo and Juliet, whom Angel ha had pulled over Elliot for speeding, a murdered by a clocked X building figure, who staged it as a car accident. Angel is the only officer who suspects foul play. Sent to resolve a small dispute, Angel discovers an illegal weapon stash including an old sea mine, and locks them in the police station. Angel warms to Danny and they binge watch action movies at Danny's home. That night, Wells land developer George Merchant is attacked in his home by a clocked figure and killed in a deliberate gas explosion. Angel suspects that the killings are connected to a recent property deal. A local journalist, Tim Messenger, approached Angel at a village fed, claiming to have information, but another clocked figure dislodged messenger atop the church tower, which falls and crushed messenger's head, killing him. Leslie Tiller, the village florist, tells Angel about her plans to sell her land to merchants' business partners. While Angel retrieves his notebook, she is stabbed in the neck with her garden shears. Angel gives chase but loses the killer. Angel suspects Simon Skinner, a sinister supermarket manager, as the property deal won't have built a rival supermarket, but Skinner has an alibi. Angel is attacked in his hotel room by one of Skinner's employees, Michael Large Armstrong. Angel knocks him out and learns of a secret neighborhood watch aliens, NWA. Mission at Central Castle, Angel confronts the NWA, led by Frank, who reveals that they carried out the murders staged as accidents. For various petty reasons, as each victim supposedly threatened Sanford's chance of winning the village of the year, Frank's motive is his late wife, Erin, had put everything into helping Sanford win the first village of the year, but travelers ruined their chance the night before the just arrived, driving her to suicide. Angel flees and falls into the castle catacombs, where he finds the corpse of the NWA's other victims. Danny appears and fakes killing Angel, pretending to dispose of the body. Danny drives Angel away and urges him to return to London for his own safety. At the battle station, Angel sees a wreck of the films he and Danny wanted over and decides to return to Sanford. The next day, Angel arms himself with the confiscated guns. He and Danny engage in a shootout with the NWA. When Frank brings out 
and other, uh, other officer tourists, um, Angel and Danny convince them that Frank is a culprit. Frank flees and the other officer besides the supermarket, with Skinner fleeing in a car with Frank. After a car chase, Angel corners Skinner at San Cross Model Village, and Skinner is impaled through the show by a miniature charred steeple. Frank, after briefly holding Danny hostage, attempts to escape in Angel's car, but is attacked by a missing swan that Angel and Danny had recaptured earlier. Angel, former superiors, arrive and ask him to return to London, as the crime rate has risen heavily in his absence. But Angel decides to remain in Sanford. While the Sanford police are going to over the paperwork of the arrest, the elderly Tom Weaver, the last NWA member, bursts into the station, wheeling a blunderbuss. He shoots at Angel, but then he jumps in front. In the resulting struggle, Weaver accidentally activates the sea mine killing himself and destroying the station. One year later, Angel has been promoted to inspector and head of the Sanford Police, and Danny is sergeant. After visiting Iran's grave, the two drive off to their next crime scene. Section 2. Cast Simon Peck as Nicholas Angel, a police constable who is promoted to sergeant and is transferred from London to Sanford. Nick Frost as police constable Danny Butterman, a younger officer who loves body cop films. Jim Broadband, as Inspector Frank Butterman, Danny's father and a rogue police officer inspector at Sanford. Paddy Considine, as Detective Sergeant Andy Wainwright, Sanford Police. Timothy Dolphin, as Simon Skinner, the manager of the supermarket at Sanford. Bill Nye, as Chief Inspector Kenneth, from the Metropolitan Police in London. Billy Whitelaw, as Joyce Cooper, who runs the hotel where Nicholas stays. Edward Woodward, as Tom Weaver, a professor who represents the neighborhood watch events and looks over the town with a number of surveillance cameras. Bill Bailey, a Sergeant Turner, boss twin brother desk Sergeant in Sanford. David Bradley, as Arthur Webley, a, f a farmer at Sanford who has a huge stockpile of weapons and a sea mine. Adam Buxton, as Tim Messenger, a journalist at the Sanford Citizen. Olivia Coleman, as PC Doris Thatcher, the solar female police officer at Sanford. Ron Coop, as George mentioned, a land developer who has a large mansion at Sanford. Kenan Granham, as James Reaper, a former at Sanford. Peter Wright, as Roy Potter, Mary's husband, landlord of Sanford's pub, The Crown. Julia Dickin, as Mary Potter, Roy's wife, landlady of Sanford pub, The Crown. Kevin Eldon, as Sergeant Tony Fisher, Sanford Police. Martin Freeman, as Sergeant from the Metropolitan Police in London. Paul Freeman, as Reeve Philip Shooter, a cleric in Sanford. Carl Johnson, as PC Bob Walker, the oldest officer in the Sanford Police. Lucy Punch, as Eve Draper, an actress and a city council member at Sanford. Anne Reed, as Leslie Tiller, a florist in Sanford. Rafe Spall, as Detective Constable Andy Cartwright, Sanford Police. David Trailful, as Martin Blower, an actor and solicitor. Stuart Wilson, as Robin Hatcher, Stone's doctor. Rory McCann, as Michael Armstrong, large, a huge but slightly dim-witted employee of Skinner's supermarket. Robert Popper, as not Janine, whom Nicholas mistakes for Janine. Joe Cornish, as Bob. Chris Wade, as Dave. Eric Mason, as Baron Cooper, Joyce's husband, runs the hotel. Lauren Hilton, as Amanda Favor, the headmistress of the local school. Patricia Franklin, as Annette Roper shopkeeper, Stephen Merchant, as Peter Jan Staker, a resident of Sanford who calls about the village swan gone missing. Nicholas thinks he is a prank caller due to his initials and surname being P.I. Staker, i.e. P. Staker. Tim Barlow, as Mr. Treasure, an old man resident in Sanford. Ben Mackey, as Peter Cocker, shoplifter in Sanford. 
Alice Lowe as Tina, Maria Charles as Miss Stripper, Steve Coogan, uncredited, as inspector from the Metropolitan Police in London, Peter Jackson, uncredited, as a criminal dressed as Father Christmas, Kate Blanchett, uncredited, as Janine Nicholas' ex-girlfriend in the Metropolitan Police Forensics Investigator, Garth Jennings, as a crack cocaine addict, Edgar Wright, uncredited, as a shelf staker, Section 3, Production, Development, Director Edgar Wright wanted to write and direct a cop film because there isn't really any tradition of cop films in the UK. We felt that every other country in the world had its own tradition of great cop action films and we had known. Wright in fact spent 18 months writing the script. The first draft took 8 months to develop and after watching 138 cop related films for dialogue and plot ideas and conducting over 50 interviews with police officers for research. The script was completed complete after another nine months. The title was based on the various two world titles of action films in the 98s, 1919s. In one interview, Wright declared that he wanted to make a title that really had very little meaning, like lethal weapon and point break an executive decision. In the same interview, Peck talked that many action film titles seem to be generated from two hats filled with adjectives and nouns and you just. Okay, that'll do. While writing script, writing it as well as Peck intended to include Frost as the partner of uh, Peck's character. Frost revealed that he would do the film only if he could name his character and he chose, chose Danny Butterman. Preparation and Filming During the later half of 2005, working title films approached several towns in southwest England, looking for an appropriate filming location. Peck commented, We are both, Peck and Wright, from the West Country, so it just seemed like it was the perfect and logical thing to drag these kinds of ideas and these genres and these cliches back to our beginnings to where we grew up. So you could see high auction balls to the wall action in from Stow on the World was considered amongst other, but after being turned away, the company settled upon wells in Somerset, Wright's hometown, of which he has said, I love it, but I also want to trash it. Wells Cathedral was digitally painted out of every shot as a cathedral city. As Wrights went into church of St. Cuthbert to be the center building for the fictional town of Stanford. However, the bishop's palace uh, is indefinable in some shots and was itself used as a setting for some scenes. While shooting scenes in the uniforms, Peck and Frost were often mistaken for genuine police officers and asked for direction by passers-by. Filming also took place at the Hendon Police College, including the driving school skid pan and athletic track, and at the Metropolitan Police Special Training Center and Gravesend. Next to Hendon is Mill Hill, where Finchley Nurseries is located, which is where the flower shop scene was filmed. The final scenes were filmed in the surviving ruins of Fairley Abbey. Film commenced on 19th of March 2006 and lasted for 11 weeks. After editing, Wrights ended up cutting half an hour of footage from the film. Outside reference, self-reference. Wrights has said that Hot Fuzz takes elements from his final amateur film Dead Ride, which he described as both Lethal Weapon set in Somerset and a Dirty Harry film in Somerset. He used some of the same locations in both films, including the Somersfield supermarket, where he used to work as shelf staker. References to Shaun of the Dead are also pressed in the film. In one scene, Nicholas wants to chase a shoplifter by jumping over several garden fence. However, Danny is reluctant. Nicholas says, What's the matter, Danny? You never taken a shortcut before? He smiles assuredly before jumping over three in a row according to the DVT commentary, Peck bolted over three fence 
and the stuntman did a backflip over the force. When Danny Danny attempts it, he trips and falls so far the fence. This is also identical to a scene in Throne of the Dead, including the failed show fence gag, albeit with the right felon role reverse. In Shadow of the Dead, it happens to Peg's character rather than Frost, and he falls over the fence rather than surf it. The DVD commentary says that Frost purposely looked back to camera at the camera after crashing through the fence to show that he had done the stunt rather than someone else. Frost character Danny in Hot Fuzz at in Shadow of the Dead have a liking for Conator ice cream. Peck and Wright have referred to Hot Fuzz as being the second film in the Three Flavors Conator trilogy, with Shadow of the Dead being the first and The World's End being the third. Other films. Various scenes in Hot Fuzz feature a variety of action film DVDs such as Police Story 3, Super Cop, and scenes from Point Break and Bad Boys 2. Wright reveals that he had to get permission from every actor in each video clip, including stuntmen, to use the clips and for use of the DVD covers had to pay for the rights from the respective studios. The film parodies cliches used in other action movies. On the topic of pursuit gun fetishes in these movies, Peck has said, Man can't do that thing, which is the greatest achievement of humankind, which is to make another human, so we make metal version of our own penises and fire more bits uh, of metal out of the end into people's heads. It's our turn to grab the gun by the hilt and fire it into your face. Despite this, Peck maintains that the film is not a spoof, in that they lack the sneer that uh, a lot of parodies have that look down on their source material, because we are looking up to it. The film also includes various reference to The Wicker Man, in which Edward Woodward had played polis a policeman, tough and law and order. Special effects to illustrate the destruction of the mansion as a result of the gas explosion, gas motors were placed in front of the building to create a large-scale fireballs. The wave of fire engulfs the camera, and to achieve that effect, gas motors were used again, but were fired upwards into a leg, same piece that slapped up towards the camera. As the sequence was shot at high speed, the flames appeared to surge across the ground. For one of the final scenes of the film, the central police station is destroyed by an explosion. Part of the explosion was created by using set model that showed its windows being blown up, while the building remained intact. The actual destruction of the building was depicted by exploding a miniature model of, station, of the station. Similar to the work in Shadow of the Dead, blood and gore was prevalent throughout the film. Visual effects supervisor Richard Briscoe revealed that the rationale for using the large amounts of blood. In many ways, the more extreme you make it, the more people know it's stylish it and enjoy the humor inherent in how ridiculous it is. It's rather like the eventually limbless Black Knight in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The most time-consuming gore sequence involved a character's head being crushed by a section of a ward at the church, a dummy was used against a green screen and the head was detonated at the point when the object was about to impact the body. Throughout the film, over 70 gunfight shots were digitally augmented. Briscoe's rationale for adding the additional effects was that the town square shootout, for example, is full of extra little hits scattered throughout, so that it feels like our hero characters really do have it all going off all around them. It was a great demonstration of how seemingly very trivial enhancements can make a difference when combined across the sequence. Section 4. Promotion The first two teaser trailers were released on 16th of October 2006. Wright, Peck and Frost maintained several video blogs, which were released at various times through throughout the production of the film. Wright and Frost held a panel at the 2006 Comic Con convention in San Diego, California, to promote Hot Fuzz, which included preliminary 
footage in questions and answer session to return to the convention again in 2007 to promote the US DVD release. Advanced screenings of the film took place on 14th February, February 2007 in the UK and the world premiere was on 16th of February 2007. The premiere included records from motorcycle police officer and the use of blue carpet instead of the traditional red carpet. Section 5. Release. Critical reception. Hot Fuzz received critical acclaim. The review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes reported a 91% approval rating with an average rating of uh, 770 of 10 based on 204 reviews. The website consensus reads the brilliant minds behind Shaun of the Dead successfully take a shot as a body cop general with hot fuzz. The result is a beatingly satiric and hugely entertaining parody. It has a Metacritic score of 81 out of 100, based on 37 critics indicated universal acclaim. Only Richards of Empire praised the chemistry between Peck and Prost, saying after almost a decade together they are clearly so comfortable in each other's presence that they feel no need to fight for the punchline, making them terrific company for two hours. Philip French of the Observer, who didn't care for the Shaun of the Dead, warmed to the comedy team in this film. This film also received positive reviews in the United States. Derek Ellie of Variety President Brogan and Dalton are especially good as Angel's Hail Fellow Well Meet, Superior and Oily Number One Suspect. As of how much to the genre, the film was well received by screenwriter Shane Black. Despite being mostly praised, not all reviews were positive. The Daily Mirror gave Hot Fuzz only 2 of 5, stating that many of the drugs miss a target. As the film becomes more action based, Anthony Quinn of the Independent said the same impish spirit as in Space It is uncorked here but it has been fastly indulged. In 2016, Empire Magazine ranked Hot Fuzz 50th on their list of the 100 best British films, with their entry stating, the second in the planned trilogy again nails the general cliches with everything from Point Break to Bad Boys 2, was openly referenced, humorously homaged. Peck's natural chemistry with long time real life Paul Frost remains endearing as ever. Elsewhere, the Scooby-Doo meets Scream mystery is peppered with Britain's finest talent, playing up the English small town cliches to great effect in a brilliantly in incongruous meeting of sleepy rural life and stabby villain action. Box office. The film generated 7.1 uh, million pounds in its First weekend of release in the United Kingdom on 14th of February 2007. In 20th of April, US opening weekend, the film grossed to 5.8 million dollars from only 825 cinemas, making it the highest per cinema average of any film in the top 10 that week. Its opening weekend take beats the 3.3 million dollars. Opening weekend Cross of Peck and Wright's previous film Shaun of the Dead. In its second weekend of release, Rogo Pictures expanded the film's cinema count from 825 to 1272, and it grossed $4.9 million, representing a 70-17% dip in the gross. Altogether, Hot Fast Grossing. 80 million five hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred seventy four worldwide. In nine weeks, the film earned nearly twice that Shaun of the Dead made in the US and more than three times its cross in other countries. Home media. The DVD was released on 11 of June 2007 in the UK. Over one million DVDs were sold in the UK in the first four weeks of its release. The two discs that contains a feature film with commentaries, outtakes, storyboards, 
that had sense, a making of documentary video box, pictures, galleries, and some hidden Easter eggs. The DVD also features Wright's last amateur film, Dead Ride, which he described as hot fast without the budget. Due to the above release date, the film arrived on Region 2 DVD earlier than the theatrical release date in Germany on 14th of June 2007. In the commentary with director, writer and fellow filmmaker Quentin Tarantino, they discuss nearly 200 films. The US DVD and HD DVD release was on 31st of July 2007. It opened at uh, two at the American DVD sales chart, selling 853,000 uh, units for over 40 M dollar in revenue. 1,923,000 units have been sold, acquiring revenue of uh, 33.3 million dollars. The HD DVD edition has more special features than the standard DVD release. A 3-disc collector's edition was released on 37th of November 2007 and a Blu-ray edition of the 22nd of September 2009. Section 6 Soundtrack The soundtrack album Hot Fuzz Music from the Motion Picture was released on 19th of February 2007 in the United Kingdom and on the 7th of April 2007 in the United States and Canada. The UK release contains 22 tracks and the North American release has 14. The film score is by British composer David Arnold, who scored the James Bond film series from 1997 to 2008. The soundtrack album's Hot Fast Suite is a compilation of excerpts from Arnold's score According to the DVD commentary, the sense where Nicholas Angel is at convenience store while leaving Sanford, and is his return to the police station while arming for the final shootout, found in the track Avenging Angel, was scored by Robert Rodriguez, who did not see the rest of the film while writing the music. Other music from the film is a mix of 90, 1960s and 1970s British rock, the Kings, T-Rex, the Move, Sweet, The Trucks, Arthur Brown, Cozy Powell, Dire Straits, New Wave, Adam and XTS, and a glass vegan indie band The Fratellis. The soundtrack album features dialogue extracts by Peck, Frost and other cast members mostly embedded in the music tracks. The sound selection also includes some police themed titles included Supergrass, Caught by the Foss, as well as here Comes the Fuss, which was specially composed the film by John Spencer Blues Explosion. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 3.0 reported license, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash y hyphen sa slash 3.0.